Docking. What is this picture, Jill? Do you know? I have. A, I've never seen anything like what this. I have not. I really ah. That is that the Earth? That it is. It's is us. That the Earth now? <laughs> it's probably closer to where we you are than where I am because the. Yeah, we um, don't usually see it. Uh, we don't usually see it from that distance, but that looks like the uh, good old Earth. Right. What is happening is that uh, one of the Mir crew members has a, a little small handheld camera inside the Russian space station, and he is pointing it out the window as he gets a chance to. Uh, I can tell just uh, these pictures uh, don't look too clear, uh, but um, they are taken from the Mir. You can see one of Mir's solar panels there. And this is a picture, I believe, of the space shuttle that uh, was taken at some time before the docking. We'll see when it gets more focused in. I'm not sure whether it's coming to us from Mir or the shuttle. That is obviously coming from Mir. It is a picture of the shuttle. This is a videotape replay that the cosmonauts had been making during the, uh, the few minutes before docking. That's what Shuttle Atlantis uh, looked like as it was approaching the Russian space station. And these pictures are being fed to Earth now, but they were taken um, some few minutes ago. And um, that's uh, it's quite a sight. It must be for Michael Fole who is looking out the window of the Mir space station as his ride home came up uh, from beneath him. It must have been uh, uh, quite a thing for him to see. We are hearing uh, on our uh, NASA communications channel that uh, the docking is proceeding normally. The two ships have touched now. There is a procedure that takes five to seven minutes for the two ships to have what, a, what they call a hard docking. What happens is there are um, um, sort of leaves on sort of like the petals of a flower on both the Mir and the shuttle. Those two leaves are about to interconnect right on the bottom of your screen. If you look to the left of the CNN logo on your screen, you can see a little piece of light, a little line of light coming across the screen. That's where the two ships connect. You can see that light going out. The reason it is going out is that the shuttle is being driven upward into the bright red docking tunnel on Mir. That makes um, what uh, the engineers call a hard mate. And when the two ships are hard mated, then uh, there won't be any chance for air to get in or out of the docking connection. And that's a good thing. What will happen over the next hour or so is that the two ships uh, will fly together just like this after the hard mate is confirmed. And they'll conduct some leak checks. They'll pump a little air into that docking tunnel, make sure it doesn't leak out. And um, then, then finally, in about 90 minutes, they'll have the hatch opening ceremony, and Michael Fole will get to see David Wolf for the first time in a long time. And uh, Wolf is Fole's replacement on this mission. I would be willing to bet you that um, David Wolf's mom, uh, who was at the launch of the space shuttle a couple of nights ago, is watching our coverage now with great interest. But it looks like it's going very, very well. Jill. She had said, in fact, Mrs. Wolf apparently said that uh, she was hoping that, that uh, David had taken his screwdriver with him. And actually, the Russian crews at one point about a week or week and a half ago had joked in a space link uh, that that was one of their primary fix-it tools. They actually have been improvising a lot. In fact, that computer uh, repair that they did really at the last minute was uh, bringing together spare parts and... and uh, kind of uh, weaving it together to work. So the, the screwdriver literally has come in handy. We've heard that more than once, that some of the tools that they had that were very, very sophisticated actually weren't the best things to use in the given case. So many times they, uh, they just improvise. And that's really what the Russians have said all along, that their, uh, their strength, even though there are a lot of things obviously that have uh, gone wrong, that they pride themselves on being able to uh, make it up at the last minute, pull it together and uh, fix it, no matter what, so uh, they're now obviously they're uh, they're happy to have more equipment, and there is really quite a lot of equipment. They have uh, a patch that they'll be putting on, as you know, John, to uh, repair some of that damage uh, from the accident back in June. They've got a lot of they have water, they have other equipment, and they even have some mail and uh, personal gifts from the families because after all, these men have been up there for quite a while. Michael Fole, of course. Um, uh, uh, Yes, my, Mike Fole up there for uh, four and a half months, ready to come back, and uh, David Wolf will be up for four months. So it's yeah. a long time to be up there. No kidding, John. I know you know 
David Wolf pretty well. I have developed a, a, a pretty good friendship with him over the past uh, three or four months of his training. He sent me an email message from quarantine in Florida the morning that he was launched into space. And uh, in this message, he said, uh, it is so important that people all over the earth understand uh, how good it is to have a space program where human beings get to fly in space. And uh, he, uh, he gave uh, you and the Cable News Network and even me an, an at a person for uh, trying to tell that story to our viewers around the world. Let's listen in to NASA commentator Rob Navius and see how things are going. Rehearsal of rendezvous and docking techniques to the Mir. He brought it all the way in uh, just a few minutes ago, executing a uh, textbook rendezvous and docking with the Mir space station at 2.58 p.m. Central Time. Atlantis and the Mir linked together for the seventh time in two years. Atlantis, Houston, we see both hooks latched. You have a go for attitude control. A very important and significant announcement that you just heard. Uh, that was uh, a NASA astronaut on the ground in Houston telling the shuttle commander he can take control of uh, the guidance for the Mir space station. This is a good thing, Jill, as you know and I know, we, we have talked a lot about the fact that uh, it's uh, the Mir's onboard computer has failed three times in the past three and a half weeks and uh, Mir, um, if that computer had failed while the two ships were together it would have been bad. That is now out of the question because the shuttle which uh, has uh, much newer computers than the one on board Mir is now in control of the guidance of both pieces of equipment. As you look down into the cargo bay of Atlantis right now you can see the docking port you could at the front that docking port now connected in this live picture from space to the Mir space station the shuttle Atlantis um, this and, uh, picture uh, taken uh, from the cargo the bay of the shuttle and the flashing lights that you see in the upper right hand corner of your screen are docking and landing lights on the Mir which were used to guide the shuttle into its docking Atlantis Houston you have a go for the shuttle attitude maneuver Ground controllers in Houston have uh, told the shuttle it's in charge of keeping Mir on course now the second time. We haven't heard back from the shuttle that they got the message. So uh, folks in Houston are now waiting to hear. Roger. On board the space shuttle, they have a checklist and... Uh, um, They are at step 31E on that checklist. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, it may well have something to do with the shuttle taking over attitude control of the now um, Mir Atlantis combination as it floats through space. All right, Jill Doherty, um, as we look at this picture from uh, the space shuttle perspective, what are people in Moscow getting to see from Mir? Yes, John. Yeah, what are folks in Sorry, Moscow John, getting to see? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Noisy where you are. I'm just. <laughs> I'm looking over your shoulder, Jill, and uh, I was trying to figure All out right. what folks at uh, Russian Mission Control were able to see as we are seeing uh, in the United States a picture from the shuttle of the uh, docking port, and it looks like the two ships have put themselves together very well. Exactly. They have the uh, probably the same picture that you're getting, John. They can see it on these screens. These are the ones that I was talking about. There's one behind me, another on the other side. And they're actually the officials, the people who are in charge, are actually down on the floor below us looking up at that. And down there they have individual kind of pods where the different people who are specialists in different areas are working. Uh, they're coordinating, obviously, and then we have the uh, commanders here in charge, the uh, very high officials. Who are, who are running the operation down on the floor, a little bit below us. Yeah. Well, so and John, uh, one other thing, we were, uh, we uh, had a chance uh, a few minutes ago. Our producer Ryan Chilcott had a chance to go around and talk to some of the officials who were here, and one of them used the word, "It was a uh, a work of masters, uh, bringing those two ships together." So I guess they are pretty happy about how it went. Well, they ought to be. It, cer it certainly sound like the work of masters, as the, the shuttle commander and the Mir commander were able to talk uh, a little Russian, a little English, a little back and forth. It's a it's a Remarkable thing. We have uh, on our illustration panel now another live picture from Mir, uh, or rather from the shuttle showing what's going on on Mir. This spot right here, I guess you can see it in this line I'm drawing, 
is the spot where the shuttle and the Mir are connected. This part, the red part, is the Russian space station. This part down here, just one tiny little piece of the space shuttle. You can see the tail of the shuttle back there. It's a beautiful picture. It is very clear. It is being transmitted to Earth from the shuttle. And as things stand now, um, what it will happen over the next couple of minutes is that they'll do leak checks on the shuttle mirror combination, make sure there's no way for air to get out, and they'll open the hatch and have a big arrival ceremony. We'll have that for you coming up uh, in a little while. We'll watch it. Jill Doherty, thank you. And uh, thank you, our viewers around the world, for watching. Um, we'll now return you to our regularly scheduled programs after this uh, pretty fascinating live event. It's John Holloman at CNN Center. Thanks for being with us. Hey, during our live coverage of the docking, and he joins us now from Atlanta with the latest. John? Oh, Gene, they did it. The shuttle Atlantis docked successfully with Space Station Mir. It was about two minutes later than planned, but the docking looked perfect from the ground. During the final approach from about 30 feet away, Mir sent live pictures to the ground and the shuttle made videotape. That's what the front of Atlantis looks like as it was seen by the Mir just about seven minutes before the docking. And I think we now have videotape from the shuttle to show you as well. That's, what, uh, that's a picture in the uh, shuttle's cargo bay, again showing the docking connector. Ground managers in Houston and Koroliev in Russia have confirmed the docking tunnel is not leaking, so the airlock separating the two spaceships can be opened on schedule a little less than a half hour from now. Isn't that pretty? Uh, the shuttle Mir combination is flying over South America right now, and you can see it's still daylight down there below. One NASA official in Russia told our Jill Doherty a few minutes ago that when the door opens, Commander Jim Weatherby will have his right hand outstretched for a handshake, but in his left hand he'll probably have that replacement computer for Mir. The space station needs a lot, and the shuttle has much of the material to bring Mir back up to normal operation. In addition to the computer, there's enough water to keep the crew alive for more than a month, and there are repair parts for the leak in Mir's Spectre module. That leak was not found in the spacewalk conducted by Commander Anatoly Slovyev and astronaut Mike Fole a few weeks back. The arrival ceremony is coming up next. And there'll be lots of hugs for both crews. Tomorrow morning, Mike Fole will become a shuttle crew member for the first time in four months, and David Wolf will become a Mir resident for the next four months. Jean? Michael Fole, John, has been up there for a harrowing several months. When are we likely to hear from him? I'm going to talk to him on Tuesday morning at about 10.25 here on CNN. I, um, I, he'll still be up there at that time. And... Um, He'll probably do some other interviews uh, while he's in space. As soon as he gets back to Earth, uh, I plan to have a nice long sit down with him and uh, you know, try to pick his brain about what really happened up there. It, uh, it was uh, pretty much touch and go a time or two while he was in space. Okay, John Holloman in Atlanta, thank you for joining us.